Hi everybody. This video demonstrates how to graph polar graphs by hand. We're going to look at graphs in the form of R equals. We're going to see the difference between a sine function and a cosine function polar graph. With the sine function, the graph is symmetric about theta equals pi over 2. All right, you can see that just reflected. So when we graph this, we only really need to graph points from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then reflect. It also helps to know the maximum value and any zeros. I can see here um, there really are no zeros, but the maximum value is 7. My graph is r equals 4 plus 3 sine theta. And you can see if you were going to graph that on a regular xy um, coordinate plane, your max value would be 7, right? Amplitude of 3, and I'm shifting up 4. With the cosine function, this is symmetric about the polar axis, right? Which is theta equals 0, right? So I am only concerned with graphing points from 0 to pi, from 0 to pi. So I would be graphing those points and then reflect over the polar axis. Again, knowing your zeros and your maximum, here it's a 5 cosine of 3 theta. 5 is my amplitude. All right, so let's do an example. I'd like to graph r equals 4 sine of 5 theta. And when you do this, uh, make sure that you're going to be in radians. And you should also know that the graph is going to look, it's going to be a rose, and when n is odd, that will tell you the number of petals. So in this case, n is 3, there are 3 petals. n is 5, there are 5 petals. When n is even, you double that, and that will tell you how many petals you have. So here, when n is 2, there are 4. Here, there, n is 4, so there are 8 petals. Okay? So... Let's do one example here, all right? Four times the sine of five times negative pi over two, all right? Again, we're going to use our calculator, making sure we're in radians. This is a little different. I have to find uh, this, the, this part first. So I'm going to say five negative times pi divided by two. I'm going to take the sine of that, which is negative 1, times 4. So that's going to be negative 4. And so I have a point, negative 4, negative pi over 2. We're going to graph that. Negative pi over 2, go back 4. Okay, so that's one point. All right? So what I've done is I've calculated the values for each of these thetas. I only need to go to one decimal place. It's difficult to get that accurate on this graph. And we'll graph a few. Negative 5 pi over 12. Negative 5 pi over 12. Go back one. Right? Negative pi over 3. 3.5. Negative pi over 4. About 2.8. There's 2.5. 2.8 somewhere here. You get the idea. Negative pi over 6, go back 2. All right, be very careful when you're graphing this. So I have all my points plotted. And again, it's, if you don't know what the, what it, that it should be a rose, it's difficult to see what this should look like, right? I do know that the maximum value is going to be 4 for each petal. And so, for instance, I'm going to go here, and I'm, you know, it's not going to be the greatest artistry, but I'm going to go to 4 and then come back. All right? And again, that's going to be reflected over theta equals pi over 2. Right? Not the greatest petal, but you get the idea. When I complete that, right, I have a nice five-petal rose. Well, I hope this helps. Again, remember to be in radian mode. Do your best in your drawing, and it's helpful to know what the graph should look like beforehand so when you get your points, you know what it should look like. Well, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.